Hello dear students. Welcome you all in social studies class. I am Dr. Shikha Jyoti from Jagran Public School. Today I am going to discuss chapter 2 of class 10th history book Nationalism in India. As this chapter is lengthy, I will cover it in two parts. This is part 1. First, let us understand the meaning of the word nationalism. Meaning of nationalism is different in the history of modern India and different in the history of Europe. In context of modern Indian history, nationalism is connected with anti-colonial movement because people fought together for their freedom from colonial rulers. They united in the process of their struggle against colonialism. But nationalism in Europe is associated with the formation of nation states. Different countries defined their geographical boundaries, their own national flag and own constitution. In this chapter, two important movements of British period have been discussed. First is non-cooperation movement which took place in 1920. The purpose of this movement was not to cooperate with Britishers. The second movement is civil disobedience movement which took place in 1930. The purpose of this movement was to break the unjust laws made by British rulers. In this part, we will discuss non-cooperation movement. Few incidents paved way for this movement and gave it moment. First is the end of First World War and the second is arrival of Mahatma Gandhi in 1950. The First World War ended in 1919 and brought many economic miseries for everyone. Because of the heavy expenditure in war, British government increased many taxes and introduced other taxes. Most of the goods were sent to the war front, so prices of important commodities rose high in India. Because of the forced recruitment in rural areas, villagers were also angry. They thought that after the First World War is over, their condition will improve, but nothing happened. Mahatma Gandhi came from South Africa in 1915. Seeing the political upheaval in India, he entered into politics. Under his leadership, India's national movement transformed into mass movement. Gandhiji's method of fighting was based on two principles, Satyagraha and non-violence. According to him, if the struggle is against injustice, then there is no need to use physical force. Instead, oppressor should be persuaded to see the truth without being violent. Ultimately, truth is bound to win. He believed that principle of non-violence will unite all Indians. Gandhiji started many Satyagraha movement. In 1916, he traveled to Champaran in Bihar to inspire the peasants to struggle against oppressive plantation system. Then in 1917, he organized a Satyagraha movement for the support of peasants of Khera in Gujarat. Affected by the crop failure, they were not in a condition to pay revenue. The very next year in 1918, 
Mahatma Gandhi went to Ahmedabad to organize Satyagraha movement amongst cotton mill workers. In 1919, government passed Rollet Act, which gave enormous power to British government to repress political activists and allowed detention of political prisoners without trial for two years. Gandhi ji wanted non-violent movement against such unjust laws. In this situation in Amritsar, police fired upon a peaceful procession. Martial law was imposed. General Dyer was given the command on 13th of April on the day of Baisakhi. A large crowd gathered in Jaliawala Bagh Park. Some came to protest against government. Others had come to attend Baisakhi fair. Many were unaware of martial law. There was only one exit. General Dyer entered the park, closed the exit and started firing at unarmed, innocent crowd, killing hundreds of people. His objective was to create a terror in the minds of Satyagrahis. First World War had ended with the defeat of Ottoman Turkey and a harsh and humiliating treaty was imposed on Ottoman Emperor who was Caliph of Islam. To defend Khalifa's power, a Khilafat committee was formed in Bombay in 1919 by Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali. Gandhiji saw this as an opportunity to bring Hindus and Muslims together under one umbrella. <coughs> By non cooperation. In his famous book, Hind Swaraj, Gandhiji wrote that Britishers were able to establish their rule in India with the cooperation of Indians. If Indian refuse to cooperate, their rule will collapse and Swaraj will come. Finally, in the Congress session at Nagpur, in December 1920, non-cooperation program was adopted. Various social groups participated in their own specific purposes. Different groups participated in non-cooperation movement were middle class, in towns, peasants in the countryside, tribal peasants and plantation workers. Now let us discuss one by one why did these groups participated in the movement and how did they fight. First group middle class started movement in towns and cities. Students left, government schools and colleges, teachers resigned, lawyers gave up legal practice, foreign goods were boycotted and foreign clothes burned in huge bonfire. Thus, import of foreign goods became half. It declined from 102 crores to 57 crores in just one year. But this movement slowed down because there were no alternative Indian institutions. Second group was of peasants. They revolted in the countryside. They were led by Baba Ramchandra. Here the movement was against talukdars and landlords. Peasants demanded reduction of revenue, abolition of begar and social boycott of oppressive 
land lords. As the movement is spread, houses of talukdars and merchants were attacked and bazaars were looted. Third group was of tribal peasants. They took the message of Mahatma Gandhi in another way. As colonial government had closed forest areas, prevented people to graze their cattle and to collect forest products, their livelihood affected. When government forced them to do begar, they revolted. Their leader was Aluri Sita Ram Raju, who talked about the greatness of Gandhiji, but asserted that India could only be liberated by the use of force. They all fought with the guerrilla technique of warfare. At the end, Raju was captured and killed. Last group was of plantation workers. For plantation workers, freedom meant the right to move freely from their confined area of plantation. Under the Inland Emigration Act in 1859, plantation workers were not allowed to leave plantation field. When they heard about non-cooperation movement, thousands of workers left the field and headed for their homes. They thought that now Gandhi Raj will soon prevail. But they were caught by police and badly beaten. In February 1922, the police fired upon the procession of non-cooperation activists at Chorichara in Gorakhpur. The activists turned violent and set the police station on fire, killing 22 policemen. This led more violence. So Gandhiji suspended the non-cooperation movement, but this movement marked the beginning of mass movement in India. Hope you have understood this part well. I will continue the chapter in my next video, part 2. Till then, goodbye and thank you.